Isaiah chapter 6, Isaiah chapter 6, and uh, there are several words that I want to be talking about tonight is uh, uh, the holiness and and I want to be speaking about uh, sanctification and so forth and what it really means to be a saint. Saint and sanctification and, and also uh, uh, the other things that's involved in it. Our Father in heaven, uh, give me special insight, direction here tonight, and especially strength. I'd be able to speak this word tonight that could be understood and also that it alert, alert people into an interest in it to capture what you have for us this night because I believe you're ready to do some great things among us if we just let you do that. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. What a name, Jesus. Sixth chapter of Isaiah. In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne high and lifted up in his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, one height and six wings, or above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings, with twenty covered his face, with twenty covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. And then said I, uh, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips and dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, and mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coat in his hand, which he had taken from, with, from, with the throngs from off the altar, and he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched thy lips, and thy neck but is taken away, and thy sin burst. We'll never get anywhere in life until we have clean lips. We'll never accomplish much of any great value in this world, no matter what going on around you, until you learn to have clean lips. Because the Bible says that the abundance of the heart that must speak it, if you have a... Uh, It'll show up on your lips. It'll show up what is inside soon. Now, I'm going to be speaking this evening about some uh, very important uh, uh, things tonight that I want us to get uh, in our innermost being. And uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to be using holiness, and also with holiness, we'll also be injecting along... Uh, some other things along with holiness, such as being a saint, what it means to be saint, and what it means to be sanctified. Now, in order to make this a little easier, I got information from a, a Greek scholar, which uh, happened to know what he's talking about, I think. And he said the English word used in the Bibles is not exactly the way it is in the Greek. He said the words are not the same. They're not having exactly the same meaning. Where he said if you take those same words and begin to understand them, uh, you can understand that. Now, Vine's up you out on that too as far as that's concerned. But, uh, uh, you know, what is a saint? What is a saint? What do you think about when somebody is a saint? What do you think about He's a holy one. That's what is called a holy one. That's what they're called saints for. Sanctification 
causes someone to become a saint. The word saint is also used the same as saint. And especially you'll find in some languages, even Germans are a little more like that, uh, to in, uh, emphasizing that more. Sanctification and saint, sanctification and holy all have almost the same meaning, but they work a little bit different, but they, they work together really much. So I may be intermingling them along tonight as we go along here in this study and maybe getting them together. So if you're talking about being holy, if you was to ask some people what holiness says, well, it's not wearing rings or cutting your hair or something like this, it's holiness to them. Somebody else may say holiness says is uh, being a complete something else. And so everybody has an opinion. But who really has the thing down pat? What is, what is the word holiness mean? What does the word saint mean? What does the word saint actually mean? You say he's a saint, but what do you mean by that? So the idea of it is when we really think about it, uh, a saint is a holy one. That's what it is. Now, it does not have to do with any denomination or anything else. It has to do with your relationship with God. What is a saint? So the, the word saint is identification that you belong to the Lord. Now, when you think about these things, uh, I want to first of all talk about uh, be ye holy for I am holy. Be ye holy, for I'm holy. And, uh, and you'll find that scripture, be ye holy, for I'm holy, at numerous places in the Bible. But I'm going to go over to Leviticus chapter 20 for just a little bit, verse 7. And here it says, Sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be ye holy, for I am the Lord your God. In other words, another place he said, I am holy. Be ye holy, for I am holy. And so he's saying, sanctify yourselves. You sanctify, I-F-Y, means that you are adding on to something. There is That word sanctify is incomplete. I-F-Y means something is falling. You, that, that will bring something forward. If you, if you sanctify something, it's bringing it forward. It's, it's producing something. And so be ye holy for unholy. In order to do that, sanctify yourself, set yourself apart, get yourself involved. And then in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 16, because it is written, be ye holy for I am holy. The reason you need to be holy is because God said, I'm holy, and you need to understand that I require holiness. And if there is no holiness, then I can't be there. And I, I believe there's a many, a many a person that believe they're right with God and they believe they're holy, but I find out too late that they're really not holy at all. They have their own the theory or philosophy but they do not have the real meaning that Heavenly Father puts on Hebrews 3, 1. Uh, Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the, of, uh, of the heavenly Jesus, partakers of the heavenly Jesus, partakers of that, getting Jesus involved with you, you become a part of him. He becomes a part of you. And that makes you a saint. You start becoming saintly. You start doing things that saints do. And uh, that simply means holy. A saint means that you're a holy one. So the holy one is looking after his holy ones and helping us to be what we need to do. So as long as the holy one is watching over the holy ones, we got everything going smooth. 
But if the Holy One does not see Holy Ones, then there's a problem and heaven is cut off. So we need to understand why it's real important to understand what a saint is. When you're a saint, you will be a holy person. That's all that is. It means you're a holy person. Now, I know very little about Greek. I did study a little bit, and I know a few things about it, but not much. But uh, there are some things that you learn in Greek that's just a little bit different. And although I learned that Greek words are not all the same, if you go one place, Greek's not the same as it is another place. It's just a little bit like German language. It's not all the same everywhere you go. I mean, uh, uh, I've heard children out in Kansas arguing about that. They didn't say, they, you're not using the word right. And I, I was listening because I don't hear what these children are saying. And uh, so it was kind of interesting to listen to that conversation. Uh, now here, uh, here it says, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave him and gave. Well, something's not. Where'd you get this translation from? <laughs> Somebody got the wrong translation there. Well, I'll try to quote it. Uh, Husbands, love your wives. Even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it, as he made present a, a, a holy church with that spot and blameless and so forth, like this. And he made sanctify it by the cleansing of the water, uh, washing of water by the word, that he may cleanse it. And you know, that's what the idea of cleanse it, so that it is cleansed. It is pure. It is it's capable of doing something. It's making you a saint. See, we get kind of afraid of this thing of being saints because this, we got out there St. Louis and St. this and St. that and St. and something else. No, now listen. Uh, you had better be a saint because that's really referring to as a holy one. That's what it's referring to, being a holy one, a holy one. And so uh, that he may present the church to himself a holy people, Joe, and, and a glorious church without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Yeah. See, the, the joyful part of that is that it's presenting the church without spot and blameless. But he does it. He gets ready to sanctify you and make you holy, but you have to do something. The Bible says you sanctify yourself because you've got to get a part to it. Do you really want to be a saint tonight? Do you really want the, the benediction of heaven on you tonight as a saint? And when you begin to understand the holiness that goes along with sainthood, uh, and get that understood, it makes a lot of difference. I would say to you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you prevent your bodies of living sacrifice, holding set with the God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but ye are transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove that it is good and acceptable and perfect will of God, uh, for our Savior, the grace of God, and so on. Now, here's the thing. You present your bodies a living sacrifice. You present yourself ready for holiness. You must make an effort to say, Lord, I want your holiness. And until we get to that place where we realize we need to be holy, we need to be a saint. And we need sanctification to get it. So the Lord gives us that sanctification. You see, because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. And that's 1 Peter 1, 16. Be holy, for I am holy. In 1 Peter 2, 5, uh, You also as living stones are built of a spiritual house, 
a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. You know what, folks? If you really think about that, when you really think about our responsibilities, if we're going to work for the Lord, that we need to be acceptable in His sight. We have to be a saint. And saints are the only ones that can make it anyway. You see, you will find through the scripture it keeps talking about saints. To all the saints at be at Ephesus, and all the saints over here and the saints over there. It is and so you're wondering why are what's he talking about? When they use the word saint, they're not talking about all the people in the church. He's talking about the saints. The, now in here tonight, how many saints are in here tonight? Really, how many saints are in here tonight? How many people are holy and devoted and God-fearing, which God has put his benediction on you, be ye holy for I'm holy, and I reckon you as you would be holy. And the, the fact is, when we understand that we're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a uh, a holy nation of peculiar people. But what's your job? What's your duty? That we should shoot forth the praises of him that called us out of darkness to his marvelous light. See, the thing of it is, you be holy. You be holy so you help other people to be holy. If you're not, if you are not a saint, you really got a problem because saints are really what God is looking for. Because the saints must be saintly. Yeah. They must look like it, act like it, talk like it. Uh, you see that he may present and tell himself a, a glorious church having a spot in the rank or any such thing. May be holy and without blame and without blemish. See, holy without wrinkle, holy without blemish. It is, it is a pure church. It's a clean church. It's, it's uh, undefiled. It's, it's separated from the world. And the Lord has given us that ability to understand what it means to be holy. So he says, sanctify yourselves. That means make sure you're getting cleaned up. Make sure you're holy. Be sure you're holy. Sanctify yourselves. Get ready for it. Sanctify. Wash yourself up and be clean. And because God is looking for holy people, that's what he's looking for. And uh, the idea in Jeremiah, when it says holy, holy, holy there, which I read, holy, 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 uh, someone has suggested that means Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Well, I uh, I don't know that I disagree with that or agree with it, but my idea, I don't think that's probably what it means. It means God is holy. He's really holy. He's very holy. And it's emphasizing the point that God is a holy God. And that unless we are holy, we have a problem. In fact, it says in Hebrews uh, chapter 12 and verse 14, follow peace with all men, and holding us. But watch this, without which no man shall see the Lord. If you're not holy, you'll not see the Lord. Now that's pretty serious. Father peace with all men, and holding us, without which no man shall see the Lord. That is scary to me. That's a frightening statement. Then I think it's very, very important that we make sure we are holy that we are saints, that we have that, uh, that lifestyle that indicates we've been with the Lord and walking with the Lord. You see, fall of peace with all men without, and, and holiness with that which no man shall see the Lord. And then he adds this, looking diligently, lest any man fail the grace of God, Let's end the root of bitterness springing up and trouble you, and there have been many be defiled. 
lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. So what he's saying, you better follow peace with all men and you better be holy because if you're not, you're going to end up where Esau ended up. See, we may think we've got it together, but folks, listen. When the Lord showed me that, that you think everybody's a Christian, now yeah, we're all Christians, we're all going to heaven. Until the day comes, you're under test. When this end time scenario starts happening and people just can't take it anymore, they, they have never learned to, to endure temptation. They've never learned to endure so they fall by the wayside. And that is not a time to fall. It's time for us to get it all together. And now, it says, O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The Lord wants saints to worship Him, not somebody else. Somebody in a spirit of holiness worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Holiness is a beautiful thing. If it's not, it's not, it's not worship. Because what we really need is, is worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. So I am really glad that we can, can worship together, worshiping the Lord. It ought to be saintly people, holy people, worship the Lord. And now when they worship, the Holy God is blessing us. Uh, forgive me, I've got a little problem tonight. I'm just trying to get a hold of things here. But uh, I may get into the thing a little better here Look, after a while. Oh, uh, so we have, uh, oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. And then we have in Psalms 97, at 12, rejoice in the Lord, ye rages, give thanks at the remembrance of His holiness. If you remember that God is holy and He requires holy people to worship Him, then that makes all the difference in the world. So you come in here some, uh, some uh, Sabbath morning and you're tired and you're wore out and you're sleepy and you're not with it and about half tired and sleepy do you think the Lord has pleasure in that kind of worship? Do you think he really appreciates that kind of worship? He wants somebody to worship him in holiness. Yes. Somebody that's a saint. The word holiness actually has to do with being saintly. And, and, uh, uh, be, and, but now being made free from sin, you become servants to God and have your fruit unto holiness. In the end, Eternal life and everlasting life. I tell you what, that's a good swap right there. At the end of all this, you have everlasting life. Now listen, folks, tonight, if we do not get a hold of the understanding of holiness without peace and holiness, no man shall see the Lord. We got to understand it's an absolute must. Well, but I think everybody's going to go to heaven. You might find out too late. That's not the way it is. And you know, let me ask you a question. When everything's going along fine, we're all just getting along pretty good. I mean, there's not really any trouble. We're just fine making money, money in the bank and everything you got. You got in your car and go and you got food and you got everything you need. And then all of a sudden something changes. And all of a sudden, persecution came. Now what would happen to those people? What would happen to those people when all of a sudden they lost their peace and lost everything? Folks, that's the reason we, I tell you what, would you give up? Would you give up if you was under gunpoint? Would you be up? Do you fear God worse than the gun? What do you fear? I mean, therefore, these promises daily will up. Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit perfecting holiness and the fear of God. See, you, if you don't have the fear of God, 
you're never going to get holy. And if you don't have holiness, you never had the fear of God. That's one thing for sure. But I like the idea of we can be holy. We can be. We can be holy. But what, that means you're going to be godly. That means you're not going to be out there anymore gossiping and slandering and tail-bearing and railing and judgmental attitude. No, 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 that's not going to work. <clears throat> you know, there's some dreadful things happening. And I tell you, I am living in the prophetic almost constantly. But if you don't think some of the things don't scare you, it's time for us to get started here. Uh, getting some fear of God on us. I know people tell you you shouldn't have the fear of God. You should. In fact, you must. Uh, I'll tell you what. When I got this prophetic word just recently that Lucifer will take over the United States of America. And he's going to take over the world, but he's going to at least take over the United States before too long. It's already headways made that way. Lucifer is planning to take over and then the uh, angel of peace, well, the, uh, the uh, angel of light, pardon me, the angel of light will bring in the angel of peace and they will saturate the land. They're going to require everybody because we're going to... Now, what their plans is, this is what their plans is before it's all said and done, is to reconcile God with Lucifer. Reconcile the church with the New Age philosophy, and they're they're endeavoring to make all of us agree with each other. And so, now you think about that, and the the angel of light will introduce the Queen of Heaven for everybody to respect and worship and so forth. And people, I was given the information direct. Many people will worship the Queen of Heaven and think they're doing God a favor because they're worshiping the God, the Mother of God, and so forth like that. And I'm going to tell you, folks, if we're not settled in our mind, we might be cut off. And if we're not holy, if we're not saints, we better understand. But I'll tell you what. Let's not just say, well, if that's a prophetic word, then we can't do anything about it. Ah, sure we can. I'll tell you what, I dare you to stand up and say one thing for sure. We're not getting involved. I mean, nobody's coming in here while I'm still here. I tell you, it's time for some righteous to stand up and say, no, you're not taking over this place yet. You're not going to do it until the Lord gets us out of the way anyway. I'll tell you what, I think we've, We've gone along with that too easy. And uh, I mean, that's a scary thing when you think about, uh, unless you know the Lord good, uh, scary that they're going to take and uh, the angel of light is going to bring uh, you to the place where, uh, well, I forget, I don't have the words before me, but it's going to bring us all together here. He's not bringing me together. I'm not getting in touch with that kind of thing. And then to top the whole thing off, I got that prophetic word yesterday and today, and today in the mail, the Catholics wrote to me for help. What do you want me to do? Why are the Catholics out to me for? Why do the Catholics keep wanting me? I don't know. I got one thing the Catholics need out of me. And you know what I think it is? It's getting a trick of the trade. Let's trick him. You know. And that's the thing that I was given the Masons are going to go right along helping this thing of bringing the church and Satan and Lucifer and all together everything. Lucifer and the angel of light and, and all bringing together. I'll tell you what, you and I better make up our mind. We're going to be a holy people. That's called saints. In the Greek language, that's called saints. 
And Saint says, say, no, 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 I'm not going along with that. I mean, that's just the way it is. I'm not going along with that. Uh, well, now wait a little. You know, we ought to, oh, one of the things that was given, the, they will have to bring in immorality before they can get this done. It has to be a total immoral nation before they can bring it in. And so they, the things they, they worked at and, and planning above all other things is they, they have to introduce everybody to agree with homosexuality. Number two, everybody has to agree with immorality. You cannot criticize anyone listening, living in immorality. And I tell you, this may shock you. And the third one is, every woman has to accept a male midwife. This is a requirement. They must, or you can get arrested of it. Because the men are going to do the delivering babies and etc. And I'll tell you, folks, I've been warning y'all about that for a long time. Now, that is now in process right now. This is not something that's going to happen sometime. It's happening right now before our eyes. And they're going to kill you. And furthermore, the Lord said, you get involved in that. You have no security whatsoever with me. I will not even listen to you. If you, if you don't have any better sense in knowing that that's wrong, I, I won't even pay attention to you. Now, that's what I got now prophetically. And folks, you know what? We just, we go along with just about anything. We're holy. Oh, we're holy. Yeah, holy for what? We got too many holes in us. I think it's what that is. Uh, I'll tell you what. It still says, follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. And I, that's scary to me. Is it scary to you to think that not everybody's going to make it? We, we've been blindfolded. We've been lied to. We've been running all kinds of things. Saints. Holy and a godly person, some people call them, but saints is more than that. They're absolute holy. That's what they are. There's no ifs and ands and buts about the saint being holy. Uh, when the Bible says, praise in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints, he says the death of his saints. He didn't say children. He got the word saints used in there. And if you realize that word saints has a real meaning to it, that means the Holy One. That's what that means. Blessed in the sight of the Lord is the death of the Holy One. You know, that's, I, I like to think of this. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, called to be saints. Isn't that a good calling? Called to be saints. Do you think this church may be called to be saints? You know, I really think this church is called to be saints. Folks, let's get out of our huss. Let's get out of our ditches. Come on, let's go. Lord, what do you want us to do now? How do you want us to pray? Listen, folks, I spend hours and hours and hours praying because if, if somebody don't do something, we're going to get caught off guard. If somebody don't do some praying, somebody's going to get off guard. Listen, I'm praying for you folks. We've got to make it. We've got to make it. Now, I know that a lot of my messages is pretty well centered around the church here, but it doesn't make too much difference to me because anybody in the world can hear it. It doesn't make any difference. Now, listen, what are we trying to do? If we're going to call for a revival or a transformation or or a, a restitution or whatever we're going to call here in the valley. What are we trying to accomplish? What do we want? What do we really want to get out of it? Do we want to get some people that are saints? We want to make saints out of the ants. That's what we need to do. Get the saints going. And I tell you, until we learn the value of being a saint, don't get all scared about that uh, well, St. Louis and all that, forget it. St. Louis, uh, whoever he was, uh, uh, he needs to be a pair of roads out there, I think, sometimes going through that town. Whoa, wait. 
take a motor home and through there and shake it pretty bad. But I'm not against that town or the people either, or even St. Louis, because I don't know who he was. I don't know who he was. I hope he was a saint. And I hope he's a good one. I hope he's proved of God, don't you? Really? Now, do you hope tonight you're a saint? You, you know, I think what we ought to do is know we're saints. Don't you think we ought to know that? We, we ought to be guessing at it. That, that's not a good thing to guess at. Uh, if the Lord would say, are you a saint? I'd say, I don't know. That wouldn't sound very good, wouldn't you? And, and what we used to say, you used to have somebody say, do you think you're saved? You know, you talk to them, well, um, I don't know. I hope so. How would you know what, if you? How would you know if you are or not? Well, I don't think anybody knows. Nobody'd know. The only way you'd know whether you're saved or not is when you die. Wouldn't that be an awful shame? Well, then, what's the use preaching? One fellow says to me, he said, "Well, if you're predestinated to be lost, you're going to be lost anyway. Don't want to go to church or not. If you're predestinated to be saved, you're going to be saved regardless. You can't be lost anyway." Well, I'll tell you what. I said, "Well, that isn't what the Bible says." Whosoever will may come and drink the water of life freely, you know. And I tell you what, we got to get rid of theology. Saints agree with saints. Now, I didn't say the people that call themselves saints. I'm not talking about that. But saints will agree with saints. Saints are holy people. That means all of us will actually agree that holiness is requiring something more than title. Actually, sainthood is more than a title. Under the, in Colossians, I mean, 1 Corinthians, pardon me, 1 Corinthians 1, 2 says, uh, when Paul's introduced here himself, he said in the church of God, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all that in every place call upon the name of the Lord Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. Some of these things is not quite maybe English right. But anyway, there it is. I tell you folks, sanctified, 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 made holy. I, uh, that word sanctified, uh, uh, I-F-Y, uh, sanctified, means that you, something is coming, something going to be changed. Right. You sanctify, because that I-F-Y means you're going to get something else coming in on us. That the word is not complete without it. You, you see, you, a saint, a saint can be a saint but if that saint goes out and gets others, then it's more than one. So anyway, it's a lot of those uh, things which we really need to understand. And I would really encourage us to really get involved in what it means to be a saint and act like one. Folks, we cannot take a chance on it. We can't, we can't take a chance on it. We've got to make sure we know what we're doing. And you know, of all the times I could have been in better shape, it, it seems to me like tonight I'm pretty bad shape to try to do this, but I'm still getting something across to you folks. We've got to get it. You know, it, it may take me uh, kind of down here on the friction bed to help me out of here a little bit because I'm telling you, I, I, I'm going to get you. We're not going to just go limping through this world. We gotta. We ought to go through this place shouting the victory. I'm telling you, pick up that sword. I'm gonna, the Lord, he says, pick up that sword. Let's go. The sword of the Spirit. Let's go. We've got to fight on. Yeah, we're going to fight our way through this thing. The battle's on. Before, before they inherited the land, they had to do a lot of fighting to get that land all. Had to kill all those people off. But I'll tell you what, we're going to have to battle those devils and demons and evil spirits and all the flesh and all the junk. Get it out of the way. We're going to win. Whatever they do to us, we're going to make it. I don't intend to be, I, I stole it. And I tell you, 
they, you know, they, the more down I am sickly, the more sickness I got, the more I feel like fighting. But I'm not going to hold on to that because I'm planning to get out of this mess. How many, therefore, these promises, dearly beloved, are you a dearly beloved? Let us cleanse ourselves from all the thinness of the flesh and, and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Come on, get it. I tell you, folks, I'd like for us to really make up our mind tonight. No, we're not going to be attached to the world. Nothing the world's doing out there has got any traction to me at all. There's not anything out there. Their dress pattern and the whole works does not appeal to me. I went up and bought me a hat up the country and, and uh, uh, you know, to wear. And, and I come home and, and somebody looked at that hat and said, you know what kind of hat this is? And I looked out and said, no, what does it say? I forget what it did say. What did it? Huh? Gangster. Gangster? <laughs> In fact, the is, I think I'm learning tonight. I said, well, I'm a gangster hunter. And I'm going to get after the gangster. Well, I'm telling you, I, I'm wearing the thing of the... But it's where? I have to take a name out of it, do something else, call it a Christian night. And, uh, you know, you think about that. All right, a saint is a holy person. A saint is a holy person. And that's, that's how simple that is. And sanctification means I'm improving in my sainthood. I'm getting, I'm getting more like a saint all the time. And a better saint all the time. You see, instead of the half hazard one, I'm ready to get in this thing for, for real. I like that statement found in Psalm 116, 15, praising the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. I mean, tell you, God's looking forward to those death of those saints. You know, I believe. I believe there's such a connection between God and his saints that when one of them dies, I believe it just thrills the Lord, if I may use that terminology, because they're precious. They're precious. Now, you, you think that nobody loves you and you're just a no-counter? You better start thinking about this. You become a saint and God will love you. And you, uh, you know, I remember the word sanctification has been used in so many different ways. I remember when I was growing up, they talked about these people to have these revival meetings and so many people got sanctified that night. And I got to think, well, sanctified? Yeah, there's a bunch of them got sanctified tonight. And what they meant got filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, I don't think that's the meaning of sanctification. Uh, it means saintly. You're getting into acting like a saint now, and your behavior has been changed. You're godly now. You're no longer a, oh, just a half uh You know, the sanctification actually has to do being less concentrated. I mean, you know, I'm, I belong to the Lord. Uh, you know, that's really what it all means. And, uh, and it says, having that for these promises, dirty blood, let us cleanse ourselves. Everybody cleanse yourself. Yeah, that, that's what the Lord did. He gave us the blood, you cleanse yourself. That says, cleanse ourselves from the filthiness of the flesh and spirit, professing holiness in the fear of God. I tell you what, folks, we ought to be so afraid of dying without knowing that everything's okay. We ought to be afraid of it. We ought to be afraid to gossip and slander and tell. But I tell you something else that will shock some of you. We ought to be afraid 
really afraid to be offended. That ought to scare us. It does me. I'm not easy offended, but I'll tell you what. And uh, what's that other word he said recently? Offended. What was that other word? Uh, huh? Addiction. Yeah, addiction. It, all right, listen. If somebody come up to me and said, you got to get rid of that addiction, I say, glory. Yeah. You know what? Let me go back one more time. I've got to get this emphasis across. I use tobacco, a whole lot of it, a whole bunch of it, a whole bunch of it, a whole bunch of it. The Lord said, if you don't stop using tobacco today, you'll never quit. Oh, I'm so offended. <laughs> Lord, I can't stop. <laughs> you know what that done? I'd still be a smoking and chewing and the cussing and everything else. When the Lord took away my cussing and challenged me about cussing, I'll tell you, they cussed me and stopped in 30 seconds. That's the reason I'm saying, folks, we can't be offended. We're men, even if you're a woman. <laughs> Woman's got men in it too. It's got W ahead of it. I tell you, whoa. I'll tell you what. I tell you, folks, we can't afford to be offended. I, I thank God yet today that he has arrested me and said, get rid of that tobacco. I'm so glad today that he arrested me. Really, I am. I'm so glad. Hey, Brother Kevin, I'm sure he is too. Because if I remember right, he got to me to pray because he didn't want mouth cancer. <laughs> but that's a pretty good thing to get rid of. And look at Brother Kevin and I, we're not even tempted. You come in here with a bunch of beech nut, we're not even bothered, are we? <laughs> now, I don't think so. No, a camel, cigarette doesn't affect, it doesn't have any interest in that at all. I tell you, things used to excite me doesn't anymore because we're changed. We're, now we're saints. That means we act like saints. You know that? We don't think like other people think. All they're thinking about is all that junk out there going on and see a woman ducking down the road. And, whew, yeah, all that kind of stuff. And No, you see the saint keeps his eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. He knows how to say on me, no. Today and tomorrow and forever. A neighbor one time said, y'all may have heard this before, a neighbor one time said, well, you call a hoe a hoe and a shovel a shovel, don't you? When you're preaching, heard me on the radio and I said, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Why not? What do you want me to call a shovel? Work. That's what a shovel's for, work. And I'll tell you what, folks, we, we've got to get out there and call sin, sin. That's what this stuff is called. Sin is sin. But I'll tell you something that's precious, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. You know, I tell you what, I'm so glad I'm alive. I really am. You know how much better it would be to to be dead. But you know what? I just think about you a lot. I can't leave you all behind. Unless the Lord definitely tells me so. I've pled my case every time, and so far I'm still alive. That's all I can tell you. But I mean, I've got a, I got your precious to me. Now, you're precious to the Lord, you're precious to me too. What makes you think that I'm going to go out across this valley and pray for ours? Is I, because I'm going to get somebody. Now, what I'm going to do now, we're going to talk about that in just a little bit. We're going to get, we're making saints. We've got to get these people to make saints out of the Shenandoah Valley. You understand that? But not only Shenandoah Valley, any other valley. Let's get some saints going here. We're not going to just have ain'ts, we're going to have saints. 
really people that they're dedicated, they're re reliable, they're dependable, they're righteous, they're holy, they're godly, they're, they're, uh, uh, they have a personality that's right there, blessing to other people, they're consecrated, they're ready to go. I tell you what a great thing that'd be if everybody was like that. And I tell you, one of these days, I don't know how we're going to do it, but I would at least like, if nothing else, to get somebody to go with me sometime and just travel around down in these roads and do some praying over the valley. See, what I've been doing is praying over a certain area and come back. I don't know where I've been. I've been in the country. I've never been in before that I know of. And I don't know where we're always at. But I tell you what, I'll find my way around somewhere or the other, and uh, I'm going to get this Shandell Valley covered. And now I think one of these days going to have to take a bunch of us involved in this thing. And I know they, they tell me kindly that when you're saying things, what we're doing here at the church, then we can't send those tapes out. Go on and send them out. It don't matter. I tell you what, I think it's okay, do you, Joe? Let them know what we're doing. My goodness, let the devil know what we're doing. I, I mean, you know, if, he, if he's too dumb to know what we're doing, let him find out. I really want to see us really get a hold of some people. You know what, folks? I've come to this conclusion. If you watch how this thing works, all right, I used to go out trying to win souls, and it was a blank. I didn't get much done. And I learned that, wait a little, you may have to pray for two or three weeks before you ever go. Break down those walls and knock down that stuff and get the Lord to repair you. Lord, give me the words when I get out there. And then when you go out there, you walk out to a person, and I'm telling you, a person that used to just really make fun of me and stuff. One time, I, uh, he's deceased now, but I went to see a fella, and I really was concerned about him because he always had a way to scout and yell. I mean, get yell, you know. He'd always ask you questions, you know, about uh, if you go to see him. He knew you just go to ask him about something. Now, why did... Uh, 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 why did uh, David pick up... Uh, so many stones to uh, kill Goliath with. Uh, if he had faith, why didn't he just have one and all this? You know what I felt like saying? I'd like to ask you something. Do you think you'd have killed, do you think you'd have had faith enough to take one stone out there? I don't know why he took that five or what he took. I don't know. But I know one thing, this one did it. I wouldn't go out there, go deer hunt with one bullet and say, you ain't got no faith because you only got one bullet. I mean, I'd load up. Yeah. If I was going on the battlefield to fight the enemy, I mean, I'd want bullets all over me. I mean, get them out of my front pockets and all of them. I mean, I'd get enough to get the job done. I mean, let's not be so sassy. Let's get going here. You got so much faith, show us how it works because we'd be glad to see it in action. Would y'all say amen to that? Anybody would like to, would you really like, would you really like to see some good old faith in operation? You, any of us can say, you know, like, uh, you know, they, Job shouldn't have said what he did. Job shouldn't have said that. My father-in-law said one time, he said, you know, I said, I don't know what I said. And, my father in law challenged me and said, Don't you do you realize that Job said that which that greatly feared to come upon me? He shouldn't have never said that. And for my brother, I mean, for my father in law's sake, I didn't say anything. I felt like saying something, but I didn't. The wisdom touched my ear, and mouth. But you know what? We can criticize. Job shouldn't have said that. Job shouldn't have done that. Job shouldn't have done that. Come on. Quit. Let's stop. Jonah shouldn't have been swallowed by a whale either. 
I mean, you got yourself on the wheel of a bad shape there but for a little bit, but I'll tell you what, at least he learned a lesson. Well, no, he didn't exactly. <laughs> he should have. He's still kind of grumpy after. But you know what? We really need to get a hold of some things. Let's not criticize everybody else. Let's show, the, let's show them how to be a saint of man. Let's show people how to be holy. Let's show them what it means. That means to start right here. Right here is where it starts, right here. That's where the trouble starts. That's where the trouble ends. The trouble starts right here. The trouble ends right here. When you make a decision, you're finished with that slandering, gossiping, tail-bearing, railing business. It'll start showing up right here. Lord, forgive me. Uh, to make a lot of endeavors. Trouble starts in the mouth, ends in the mouth. Thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believing in thy heart, and God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It all starts out right there. But, you know, uh, Paul said unto me, who am the least of all the saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. The unsearchable riches. I mean, the least of all saints is this grace given. You know what? That really, really excites me. You know, I, I've said already that, you know, Paul and I were brothers. We both had, I mean, you see an old fan sitting over there cussing and carrying on the way I used to do, and God saved me? You think about that. I wasn't bad. I was very bad. I'll tell you, I got saved. Thank God I'm down you right now like I got saved. I'm just so glad for that redemption to our Lord Jesus Christ. Folks, maybe some of us tonight may need our lips sanctified. Maybe we need to have some new things to say about our fellow man instead of criticizing all the time. There's a fellow who writes to me uh, quite often. He quit for, for a while, and then he started up again. And I'm always glad for what he gets because he gets a lot of information on him. But I've never heard him ever say anything good about any human being on the face of the earth. Never. It's always that this person doing wrong, this person doing wrong, this person doing wrong. And I learned some things from it, but how do you like to live like that? As far as I know, I've never, ever heard him say anything about anybody, and that was good. And i tell you one thing I said one time to my wife. I said, you know, I just really love to hear one of these critics just say, you know, folks, I want to tell you, and he was criticizing Kenneth Copeland from one end to the other. I like for him as just said, you know, folks, I'd like to call a prayer meeting for Kenneth Copeland. Would uh, could I get a number of you people just let's let's fast and pray for Kenneth Copeland because he does touch touch a lot of people, and you know, no, that isn't the way it works. Critics don't talk that way. Only people have been rescued from criticism. I, and a critic, I was a professional critic. So I know. And I'll tell you what I think we need to do is sanctify, sanctify a, a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land, the house of the Lord our God, and cry unto the Lord. Let's get out and cry to the Lord. Let's get out there and cry to the Lord. Listen, folks, I think it's time for us to get out here in the valley and do something. Now, I, I don't know how y'all feel about it, but I think the time has come that we're going to get out there. I went through this county often enough to break some of the things off, and what I would like to do is get, uh, get uh, a couple leaders with me sometime and just drive out across the valley and just see what y'all picking up. See what y'all can get and kind of maybe circle some way and 
I don't know if he had to be old leaders, but I mean, if, if we can get somebody, we get that white man, we can take a bunch of us or we can do whatever. But I'd like to at least see us get started with something and, and also get, get kind of in the place where we can kind of decide what to do about the intercessors. And so, uh, okay, let's uh, just cut the recording system off right now.